The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 9, starting from verse 35 to chapter 10, verse 8. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go, rather, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment. Give without payment. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Last Sunday, Trinity Sunday, began the Semester Ecclesiae, the Semester of the Church, when readings and collects focus on what the Church has learned from the previous Semester of the Lord, Semester Domini. It's a semester in which the Church is given time to inwardly digest and grow, to go out and teach and preach and minister. It's green time, also called ordinary time, although there is nothing ordinary about it. God proves his love, which means we, all of us, have nothing to prove. All we have to do is go out and serve. Peace from God. And God is all things, is in all things. So this means also peace with God's self, with others, with the world, with everything. In Hebrew, this concept is called shalom. In modern Hebrew, this of course means hello or peace, but it implies also holiness and wholeness, unity. And this means both in body and soul, divine and human, like the two natures of Christ, in their own self and through the Holy Spirit. By faith and grace. And these two are interconnected. It's not just what you know or accept, not just intellectual or emotional, but fully one, fully connected to each other. They're not disconnected separate from each other, like something you see from afar, but cannot grasp. This also means that it can never be something just passive. It moves, with everything and anything involved. Patience, hope, mercy and love, forgiveness. Faith and grace do, make, are. They're interconnected and that has consequences, not just for the salvation of humankind, not just for the next life after this life, but also for the here and now. The disciples were real people in a real place, with real hopes and disappointments and ideals and struggles. It's not enough to just comprehend or accept that God has forgiven our sins through his own Son. Forgiveness and mercy aren't things that you look up from afar. 
the onlooker must do, make, be. Many people know many things, have many opinions, are educated and informed, think, feel, look, believe. But after all that, well, nothing much happens, many Christians included. In 1520, Martin Luther, the German reformer, wrote in the freedom of a Christian, A Christian is a perfectly free lord of all, subject to none. A Christian is a perfect, perfectly dutiful servant of all, subject to all. Justification through faith alone is an active thing, but also an activating thing. We were made free, we were forgiven to share our shalom with others and the world, to proclaim shalom, the peace from God. This is the diagonal calling for us today, here. As long as God is engaged, we must engage too. God takes care of our salvation and eternity, so we can take care of others, other Christians other peoples, other things in creation. Faith and grace are the call to minister in a world where many people, also many Christians, need ministering, need certainty, need help. When they're crying out for absolution, when they're crying out for baptism and holy communion, when they're crying out for freedom, when they're crying out for justice, when they're crying out for equality, for human rights, when they're hungry, angry, scared or forgotten, downtrodden and poor, addicted or depressed, hurt, abused, tortured and defrauded, cheated, neglected and ignored, taken for granted. All of these without exception, all people without exception. Active faith is faith that is tangible, that is understandable, that's approachable, that does, makes and is. Not just a word, not just a deed, but both. To be and perhaps not to be, today, to lay down one's life for a friend or even a stranger. In 1937, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German Lutheran pastor, theologian and martyr, wrote in The Cost of Discipleship, Such grace is costly because it calls us to follow, and it is grace because it calls us to follow Jesus Christ. It is costly because it costs a man his life, and it is grace because it gives a man the only true life. It is costly because it condemns sin, and grace because it justifies the sinner. Above all, it is costly because it cost God the life of his son. Ye were bought at a price. And what has cost God much cannot be cheap for us. Or as St. Paul describes it, but God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Justification through faith and diaconal ministry are parent and child, not the same, but related and intimately interconnected. One truly happens with and alongside the other. God sets in motion so we can run with it, take it up and do great things as co-workers, like those first disciples, with God, in a world which is in need of a whole lot of work, a whole lot of shalom. Suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Interconnected to each other, to people, to ourselves and to God. To rediscover this unity, this wholeness, to experience it, to recognize it, to do and to believe, that is the task for our semester ecclesiae, the semester of the church.
green time, also called ordinary time, even if there's nothing ordinary about it. Each time, like God has done and still does each time again and again, we re rediscover in faith and grace this calling when we set this goal before us and the world can be a vineyard, one of a kind, fully at peace, in Shalom. Today, God still proves his love, which means we, all of us, have nothing to prove. All we have to do today is go out and serve. Peace still from God, and God is still all things, is still in all things. So this still means peace with God's self, with others, with the world, and with everything. Amen.